Good evening. Welcome to week three of our Lenten Wednesday services. I'm Pastor Beth Bernie Johnson here at St. Stephen Lutheran Church in Sylvania, and it is my privilege to welcome you all to this online worship experience. This evening will be, as I said, week three of our Prodigal God series. And let us begin as we confess our sins. Holy One, we confess that, that we, we have, have wandered, wandered far, far from you. you. We have we not, not trusted, trusted your promises. promises. We, we have ignored your prophets in our own day. day. We, we have squandered our inheritance of grace. grace. We, we have, have failed, failed to recognize, recognize you in our midst. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. Forgive, forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure, assure us again of your love. love. And help, help us to love our neighbor. Our neighbor. Amen. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes near to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Let us sing together.
The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Let us pray. God of compassion, you welcome the wayward and you embrace us all with your mercy. By our baptism, clothe us with garments of your grace and feed us at the table of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A resource that we are using during this Lenten season is a book entitled The Prodigal God by Timothy Keller. You are uh, welcome uh, to, uh, to use this book in your own Lenten journey, uh, but it has been a valuable tool for us as we've planned and imagined our Lenten services together. Our reading tonight is from the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided up his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had, set off for a far journey, and there he squandered his wealth in wild living. And after he'd spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come. He replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The elder brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him, but he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you killed the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me. 
and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Here ends the reading. People of God, it's a, it's a very good and blessed thing that Olivet Lutheran Church and St. Stephen Lutheran Church have a spirit of collaboration and a common desire to be a gracious presence in the community of Sylvania. Many thanks to your dear pastor for her gentle and generous spirit. Tonight, we get to talk about invisible people. People we don't often notice who make life better for us. Those who serve us. And infuse our lives with order. But these people we would rarely sit down to dinner with or engage in a way which is deeper than just perhaps a transaction. I think of the man wearing a Santa suit who rode by our house on a tricycle a few times a day during the Christmas season. My spouse and I moved before Christmas to downtown Toledo. And this man is, was a consistent Santa suit presence on his tricycle. And he made me laugh. A waitress who may serve me food, but who one can tell has a long and complicated story. A story that's unknown to anyone. She serves me my hamburger and my french fries. Invisible people. The cashier. The cashier who's been working at Food Town on Central Avenue for more than 25 years. And she knows everybody who comes in that store. She calls me honey. Actually, she called me honey for a long time until one day I went into the store with my clergy collar on. She's never called me honey since. That was my mistake. I liked it when she called me honey. You may tell that I have an arm that's a little out of whack. The surgical team, last week during my surgery, that surgical team gathering around my bed in the surgical unit along with a few medical students. They were there before I drifted off to sleep. They helped me, and I do not know their names. In our story, there are no names. The story that we just read, just characters. A father, a son, another son, a citizen of another country, servants, hired men, some friends, a few pigs, an unfortunate fatted calf. That's about it. The whole story is embedded with the invisible people, the servants, the hired men, a farmer from another country, The vast majority of people in this story, they have no power in the predominant culture of their day. Like the woman who called me honey. Like the Santa riding his tricycle. Or the surgical assistant. But as we almost always do, when 
when we dig a little bit deeper into the story, we get a glimpse of the majesty of this storyteller and of this storytelling. Just asking simple questions of the story or making simple observations can lead you places you don't anticipate going. For instance, the sons have a father. There's no mention of a mother. That's a hint, perhaps, that the father, too, may feel invisible, may feel lost, may feel disconnected. When the youngest is bowled over by his father running to him, the father, the father commands his servants to get the party ready. So that's what they did. These unnamed people scurried off and prepared the party. Question... Who was in attendance at the celebration? Who was included like family? Did they send out invitations far and wide? Did people have to RSVP? Did they arrange for one of those gift things at Target to get this kid some new clothes? No. This was a spontaneously, quickly thrown together party. No time for formalities. The best kind of celebration. All together rejoicing. The invisible people. The servants. The labor is the father, the son, the unfortunate fatted calf, and one grump who could not accept that such a joyous event could be centered around someone who had so royally messed up. The only one not included is the one who made that choice to not be included out of his anger and a sense of privilege. It seems like the father went out to visit with the angry son, right? The father went out and, and apparently he was still talking with his son when the party wound down. We're not directly told what happens after this, but we get a hint that the father's love had no limits, had no limits, and that the father's lovely, beautiful, merciful, fun, chaotic inclusion of everybody would be extended even to his grumpy son. I wonder what it would be like to call some people together who bless me by their presence. But at the time, were largely unnoticed. How about a party at our house, ASAP? This is just a sermon. This is an illustration, okay? <laughs> Although you're welcome to come anytime. <laughs> A party at our house, ASAP. I'll pick up a dozen pizzas, some beer, some soda, some cheese sticks. Santa, you wear your outfit. Cashier, you call me honey. Surgical assistant, wear your mask. UPS guy, don't forget to bring what you are supposed to deliver me six months ago. And even people trying to sell me an extended car warranty. People eking out a living in the ways that they are able. Migrant workers who allow me to buy fresh tomatoes and 
the, re you, the, 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 the Ukrainian re refugee thrown, shown, showing, revealing a depth of courage and a spirit of selfless loyalty that is stunning. Come. Let's all sit at the table. Let's all sit together. At the place of honor, every one of us. You are of great value. Everything that I have has always been yours, the Father says. You are of great value, you colorful, beautiful people who will not be set aside. But every moment of your life and with every breath you take, you will be brought closer. Amen. We sing. drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Jesus formed the disciples in ways of extravagant mercy and profound welcome. Lead your church to be a community marked by forgiveness, hospitality, and celebration. Send us to transform a world plagued by fear and condemnation. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. You make the land to produce a harvest that sustains your entire creation. Equip farmers and farm workers who till the soil. Nourish the earth with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Heal grounds tainted by pollution or misuse. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Countries are divided and leaders often harbor grudges. Reconcile nations that experience conflict. Act quickly to bring an end to war. Appoint peacemakers trained in the art of diplomacy and foster a spirit of collaboration among political rivals. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your people cry for help in times of distress. Resolve disagreements among family members. Save those experiencing financial hardship. Hear our prayers for those who are sick or grieving. Console us with the promise that everything can become new. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your love comes to us when a table is set and a feast is prepared. Bless the feeding ministries of St. Stephen and Olivet Lutheran Churches. Bring an end to hunger in our community and around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. The one who was dead is alive again. We give thanks for those who have died, confident that steadfast love surrounds them. Shelter them in your love until we are gathered at your heavenly banquet table. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. People of God, receive this benediction. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.